Now we do love a festival here on Phantom 105.2 your ultimate festival station and as the season winds down we want to hear your stories of the more unusual festivals you've attended um, anything it doesn't have to be obviously it can be elements of a music festival but other festivals that you've been to strange things from around the world or indeed here at home 51052 or email live at phantom.ie because I'm joined now by journalist Brandon Ferdick who wrote an article on the five strangest festivals from around the world and you thought Electric Picnic took it out of you these ones will be way 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 worse Brandon thanks for joining me today how are you? Hey I'm great it's uh, it's a lot of fun being on the radio in Dublin I'm Come here, you've written about the top five festivals. Was it difficult to come up with the top five? Well, no, not really. There's there's a lot of strange festivals out there, and there's probably a lot that most people don't even know about. Um, but, you know, thanks to the Internet, you know, I just went online and, you know, researched for a while and found five that I thought would be not just, um, you know, weird, but, you know, also family-friendly, which I had to look for as well for this particular article. I'm sure there are some really, you know really strange ones that I couldn't write about so I had to you know make them family friendly like I said and found five that were fun and you know also kind of popular so that they can you know make the festival status otherwise it's just a strange group of people doing weird things and we don't want to really I'm know, just wondering yeah are, are the unfamily friendly ones just groups of people pretending it's a festival going a little bit <laughs> oh look you're a little bit strange yeah probably Nice. Yeah, some, some like eyes wide shut stuff or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no one wants that. Oh, and oh, now I've got a vision. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, no vision. Have you seen that movie? I've seen that movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, Tom Cruise. I don't need a vision of him at any time during the day. Um, now, there's one that you had at number five, which I think a lot of people. I know a good few people have gone to this one, and it's in Spain. Oh, that's cool. Which one is this? Yeah. Well, that's called La Tomatina, and they basically started. Uh, it's just a huge tomato fight. It started off in like the 40s when, yeah, I don't know, there was some scuffle and some guys went to the nearby fruit vendor and grabbed his produce and started throwing it at, you know, the, the, the opposition and then the police broke it up and I guess the offenders even had to pay for the tomatoes. So then the next year they decided to do it again, but this time, you know, they were more economical and they brought their own tomatoes. So they threw those around and then the cops came in and, you know, broke it up. But they just kept going and going, and finally, you know, like a good, um, you know, law enforcement does, they, they they finally say, you know what, we can keep fighting this, or we can absorb it and use its momentum to a community advantage. So they turned it into a festival, and it's been going strong and building and building, and now not only do they do it there every August, but there's been, like, franchise tomato fights in Chile, even in Reno, Nevada, here in the States. Uh, there's one in China, and they have these tomato fights, and people just whip tomatoes at each other. I think it's pretty gross, but I'm not a huge fan of tomatoes. And even if you were, I think you'd get sick of them by the end of the day. But uh, yeah, yeah. For, for one hour, they throw tomatoes at each other and just get plastered in tomato. Yeah, I'm with you. It actually ugh, gives me the gawks. Don't like that at all. At number four, you've got a festival. Can everyone take part in this? What is it? It's a. Uh, it's more of a convention than a festival, but... You know, you, you, you kind of got to bend the rules a little when you're looking to write a good article. It, it's just a ventriloquist festival. And this, this actually might bring together some of the more interesting people because, uh, you know, they're all talking through dummies, right? You know, so they've all got, like, split personalities. But instead of looking at them like, oh, this guy's weird, we, we, we laugh at them if they're funny and we give them money. So they all get together in Vegas. And, uh, you know, another reason why the festival might be interesting. Yeah. And they just... I don't know. They, they, I don't even know if they have conversations. These might be some of the more socially awkward people out there. They, maybe they talk through their dummies and just talk to each other through their dummies. Like, I don't know. I, that would be one to, to go to and get some footage of. But yeah. I just got a picture on the Internet and, and, and then just, you know, kind of poked fun at it a little bit and just mentioned it, that it, that it happens every year. I'm not sure when in the year it happens, but, but, you know, once a year they get together in Vegas for their ventriloquist festival. And we're moving back to Europe again for number three. What the hell is wrong with us? This one is, I adore this. What's the third one on your list? Um, I hope I pronounce this right. L, uh, where is that? Sorry. Uh, Colacho, Colacho Festival, El Colacho, which apparently means the devil. Yeah. Gosh, some of your Spanish-speaking listeners are probably laughing right now, but um, El Colacho. And, you know, this, again, has its roots way back when, and... People end up doing weird things when it comes to religion and politics, as we all know. 
And, you know, what's kind of cool is I, I like these festivals because they're sort of like uh, time capsules, aren't they? And they let us know, like, well, the things that we thought were acceptable 500 years ago are, are, are in this time capsule called a festival. And now today, you know, we see them, and some of them are derided as, as controversial. And, and, you know, this particular one, the, the Vatican has said, hey, you know, Catholic Church of Spain, you know, keep your distance. We don't want to be associated with this. Basically what it is is guys dress up as the devil, and for some reason they dress up in red and uh, yellow, isn't that the colors of Spain? Red and yellow are the colors. Yeah, know. yeah, they're the colors of Spain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, they, they dress up in red and yellow as the devil, and I don't know why they choose those colors. But then they 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 they, they, they put all the babies that were born in the previous twelve months on this mattress. <laughs> so it must not be a huge group of people, or you would have a huge <laughs> number of babies. But there looks to be in the pictures that I've seen, you know, like eight babies, and then they just jump over this mattress, and uh, you know, it's supposed. Uh, you know, Catholics, original sin, supposedly it cleans the babies of their original sin. God, and, I love uh, organized you know, religion. Them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The craziness. But, you know, it's a small price to pay, I wrote, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the, the tiny chance of your baby being hurt, which I've never heard any reports of, and, you know, the payoff is, you know, eternal bliss in heaven or whatever. So, obviously, it's a, it's, it's high, high, a high reward, low risk. Let's jump over some babies, everyone. Sounds like great, great crack. At number two, something that makes me want to cry. It's a camel wrestling championship in Turkey. What the hell? That made you cry, but the baby jumping didn't, huh? No. So, yeah, but this is awful. They get two camels to wrestle. Is this it? Well, yeah, they do. Um, it's, it's, it's not... I mean, you know, from what I read, you know, camels wrestle anyway. I mean, like two bucks. You know, two deer will, you know, block horns in the woods. And two camels wrestle. Of course, they wrestle over women or women, female camels. Um, and so what they do to get these camels to wrestle is uh, they bring a female camel there. She's in heat. And, you know, she's looking for some action. And then these two male camels will, you know, fight for it. And then, you know, people are cheering them on. And, you know, the camels will, you know, what can camels do? They don't even use their legs. They just, they use their, their huge necks and heads to kind of, you know, try to pin each other down with their with their heads and necks, and then once one gets pinned down, it runs away, and it sends the people, you know, in sort of this, you know, kind of kind of running like, oh, it's just, there's there's this camel, you know, running toward us, and so people have to get out of the way of this fleeing camel, which I know pales in comparison to the running of the bulls, but you know, Spain already had two on this list, so I didn't want to put three on there. They're, they're, <laughs> Spain, for some reason. They, they hog all the all the weird festivals. Well, we're going to go over to Japan now because number one, yeah. I have never heard of this before. Tell us about this festival. I hadn't either, and I couldn't believe I hadn't heard of it because it's, it's it's so interesting. Um, and you know, it was sort of on the 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 cusp of being a little unfamily friendly. But I guess it's not as crazy as it sounds. But it's called the Naked Festival, and it's all men. And you know, another one of these festivals that started off, you know with some, I suppose, spiritual belief, where the, 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 there's a chosen guy, and I think he wears maybe a little bit of something, but I know that he shaves his body hair, uh, which isn't as big of a deed for a Japanese man as it might be for an Irish man. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but the Japanese men aren't, 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 usually aren't very hairy, but they got to shave their body hair, and then they, go, then they sort of go running, and all these, all these dudes in loincloths, they just go chasing after him. And they want to touch him, see, because if they touch him, it's some purification. And, you know, again, probably started hundreds of years ago. They do it now. It's a good time. You know, I suppose if you, if you compare it to maybe like a fraternity or something, uh, like at a university, it's, you know, sort of along the same... Yeah, it's like a stag know, night, actually, come to think yeah, of it. Yeah, you know, a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of acceptable man love. But a whole more eroticism, yeah. A little bit, and you know, yeah, and, and then they can let, let that side of them out. Maybe it's like a, a vent, you know, a, uh, a way for them to get that out of their system for the year. I, don't, I, I have no idea. I, I'd be reckon, interested in watching this. I definitely wouldn't be interested in attending it or in, uh, in taking part. Uh, but Brandon, but who knows? I mean, you know, I haven't done it. Don't knock it till you've tried it, right? Exactly, the Naked Festival. I kind of reckon that they all sit down and then watch uh, Top, Gear, uh, Top Gun afterwards. Get the get the whole homoerotic vibe going, and it's, it's perfect. Then, 
there you go with Tom Cruise again. I, you know, I, you know, as much as you just just them right away with eyes wide shut, you go and bring them up again. I know. I you didn't know, know what? I bet they watch. I bet they watch Tom Cruise in the in the, the Last Samurai. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Ah, there could be that as well. It, it it could be something like that. Well, listen, Brandon, they're they're unusual festivals to say the least. And if we all thought we were doing weird things at Electric Picnic this weekend, there's a lot weirder stuff going on around the world. Brandon Ferdig, who wrote this article, thanks a million for chatting to me today about the strange festivals from around the world.